Welcome ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to making this far in my course for graphing the cosecant and secant function. Basically what I'd like to do is just kind of go through a quick little summary of how to graph um, the secant and the cosecant function as well as then kind of tip, um, go on some tips and tricks as well as some common mistakes that I see from uh, my very own students in classroom and in the past and also online. So when looking into graphing the cosecant and the secant function, what we basically looked at was graphing the reciprocal function. So common mistake was making sure that we know that sine and cosecant were reciprocals of each other and cosine and secant were reciprocals of each other. So if I was asking you to graph you know, the secant function, what we did was we started by graphing the sine function. And we would use the exact same process as, as solving for the sine function, determine what are the transformations, what is, being, uh, what is affecting our graph, then identify the amplitude, the period, the x scale, the phase shift, the vertical transformation, and determine if there's a reflection. We apply all of those transformations for sine and or if we we're doing cos secant, we would do cosine. We apply all the transformations and then wherever there was an originally an x-intercept for the sine or cosine graph, those are now going to be asymptotes for our new uh, secant or cosecant graph. And then we just take the points at the maximum or the minimums and kind of grab parabola-shaped curves approaching the asymptotes. So that's kind of like the basic idea of what we did. Um, obviously, I have a much longer video uh, going in you know, detail on that, which I'm assuming you already watched. But now let's kind of go through some tips and tricks. Um, the main important thing is understanding this parent graph. And it's, you know, you hear me kind of go over this over and over and over again. It's very, very important to kind of understand where would these, you know, max, where, what does this graph look like without any transformations? what does the graph look like? And especially, what does the reciprocal graph look like? Because that is going to be able to identify if we're making a mistake or if we are on the right page, we want to make sure that we're applying transformations to the correct function. So understand the parent graph. Next thing is also understanding those characteristics. This goes to graphing the reciprocal function, sine and cosine. You got to understand what does A, B, C, and D all do to the function? How does it affect it? And not only, what about you know, the amplitude. What exactly does the amplitude mean for sine and cosine? How is that going to now affect um, my cosecant and secant graph? What about the period? What about the phase shift, the vertical transformation, and so forth? And the last thing is obviously knowing the reciprocal functions. You cannot graph secant and cosecant. Well, you can, but um, not very well, at least manually, in far as my opinion, without understanding the sine and cosine graph. So making sure you know those very, very well, because really, once you graph sine and cosine, just as I mentioned, you graph those, and then you just make asymptotes at the x-intercepts and, and parabolas at the max and mins approaching the uh, asymptotes, and you're pretty much done. So let's go into some tips and tricks. Uh, I kind of wrote this up for the last one. Um, tips and tricks is, you know, let's, if we're looking at the reciprocal function, a lot of students still make the mistake of looking at their phase shift and saying, oh, this is a shift right three. Well, remember, whenever, since we have a b, to determine the phase shift, we want to take bx minus c. Because what you would notice is this is actually a phase shift of three, um, 3 divided by pi over to the right. We're actually, we're actually changing um, our, uh, our period is actually being affected. So the shift is just not going to be 3 units to the right. Um, again, knowing the initial period, this is true for sine, cosine, cosecant, and secant. Um, students still make mistakes. They make asymptotes where they're supposed to be uh, max or min periods. They you know, don't start at the right initial periods and everything. Um, and I already asked some totes we already hit on. And the next thing is the other most common mistakes is I see students, when they have secant, they do the reciprocal function of sine. When they have cosecant, they do the reciprocal function of cosine. So very, very important to make sure that you know your parent graphs as well as your reciprocal functions. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is just a quick little summary of graphing tangent and cotangent functions. Thanks.